Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, just about a year ago, a young fellow here at Columbia created a brand new radio show that met with very popular acclaim with all you listeners. Perhaps you've heard of my friend Irma. Yes. <laughs> well, now this young man has created a brand new show. Fully, we think, as good as Irma. And we think you'll enjoy meeting the man himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Cy Howard, our producer. Thank you. About a year ago, same building, same stage, we brought you my friend Irma. That was the little blonde girl. And now we're bringing you a new character, and this is Luigi Bosco. And this is a little Italian immigrant who came over from Italy, and he settled in Chicago. Now, Luigi Bosco is like every other person, except he doesn't understand English too well, and he doesn't embrace American customs. He crushes them. <laughs> He's the type of man that when he walks in a park and he sees a policeman, he says, I think I'll pick a flower and give it to the nice policeman. <laughs> well, you know what happens to him. <laughs> This is Luigi Bosco who comes over to this country. You can laugh at him because you'd be just as funny as it if you were in Italy. A Luigi Bosco happens to be Italian. Could be anybody. Could be an Irishman, could be a Dutchman, could be a Jew, could be a Pole. But this is a little fella Italian, a warm, little, wonderful Italian who was brought over here. Now, he was brought over here by a man called Pasquale who paid his passage because Pasquale happens to have a daughter he cannot get rid of. Everybody on the block knows Rosa. Well, you'll see that happen. So he figures if he gets little Luigi over here, boom, he's got a marriage. So he sets up little Luigi in business, and little Luigi runs an antique shop. And this is his adventures. And he writes to his mother in Italy, explaining all these wonderful things about America. And you know, we take everything in America so much for granted. We walk in, cops don't bother us. If they do, you try to get a ticket fixed and all that sort of thing. But Luigi is different. This is a very inquisitive man. He asks an awful lot of questions. So we want you to meet Luigi Bosco, a little immigrant. And it's really a historic occasion because you are the first people. This is the greatest collection of guinea pigs I've ever seen. <laughs> but you're all nice guinea pigs. We're going to try it on you because after all, you build radio shows for people. And you're all nice people. And if you like it, then the other people will like it because you're all pretty much of a cross-section of America. And so you can laugh at him, have a good time. It's a comedy show. He don't mind. He'll go ahead and talk in his broken little Italian, just the same as ever. Now, um, in the cast, he has a school teacher. And who teaches him? And this is Miss Spaulding. And uh, she is played by Mary Jane Croft, a wonderful actress. Mary Jane. <laughs> now, Luigi Basco is broke, but he figured he needed a general manager. And he's the type of man, and he got a general manager, he got an 11-year-old kid who handles all his bookkeeping for him. And Luigi Basco's general manager is played by Bobby Ellis. You've seen him with Jack Carson in April Showers, and a wonderful little actor, Bobby Ellis. <laughs> now, Pasquale. That's the man who runs Pasquale's Spaghetti House in Chicago. He is played by a man who you've known as Falstaff on the Fred Allen Show, Played so many various wonderful parts, a very great comic. Alan Reed, our Pasquale. <laughs> now for Luigi Bosco, the little immigrant. We finally got a man. We, the minute you see him and I announce his name, you must know that he would personify the first little Italian, the only little Italian immigrant who would come over to America and have this tremendous love of America. Wonderful, sensitive, wonderful, warm, lovable person. You've seen him in a medal for Benny, Mr. J. Carroll Nash. <laughs> well, we want you to have a good time, laugh, and you all tell us if you like our show, The Little Immigrant. Sonna ci ho perso per 
As every American school child knows... On October 12, 1492, an Italian explorer, Christopher Columbus, discovered America. On September 27, 1947, a young Italian immigrant, Luigi Basco, rediscovered America. Christopher Columbus arrived with three vessels. Luigi Basco arrived with three dollars. <laughs> When Christopher Columbus landed in America, he said, I named thee San Salvador. When Luigi Basco landed in New York, he said, Please, give me a ticket for Chicago. <laughs> and so from Chicago's Little Italy, the Columbia Broadcasting System brings you a new comedy, The Little Immigrant, created by Cy Howard and starring J. Carol Nash. Christopher Columbus described his adventures to Queen Isabella in Spain. From Chicago, Luigi Basco describes his adventures to his mother in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, I make a promise to write to you, so I write. In the United States, when a fellow keeps a promise to write, is called promissory note. In six months since I've been in America, my writing is already so good, words that don't even have Italian accent. <laughs> I have a story here in Chicago, just like two other businessmen, Marshall and the Field. <laughs> they got the same kind of store, only better location. <laughs> Mamma mia, how you like my new business stationery? See, on top it say, Luigi Basco, founder and a prop. Prop is short for a longer word, I don't know. <laughs> also, my line of business Old and the new antiques Everybody here are crazy for old things All the furniture, all the lamps, all the chairs Also, is lots of people are crazy about all the granddad <laughs> Must be a finer man Our countryman, Pasquale, who bring me to this country and rent me store, has a nice place next door. It's called the Pasquale Spaghetti Palace. Sometimes at night, when a breeze from Lake Michigan is just right, then the smell from a Pasquale's palace is reminding me of a home, and I'm much lonesome for you. But in the morning when I wake up, I'm so pleasant to be in America. And like Uncle Pietro always say, is no rose without a little thorn. And in this case, is a very big thorn. <laughs> because now I found out why Pasquale is bringing me here. He's always wanting I should marry his daughter, Rosa. You remember when Rosa was a nice little girl? Mamma mia, something has happened. <laughs> Uh, how, how can I describe her? You know the bull Uncle Pietro has? <laughs> well, I go in the pasture, look at a bull, take off her horns, that's a rose. <laughs> Pasquale, he argue with me. He say Rose is a wonder fine girl. I say Rose is a too fine girl. <laughs> but outside Rose, America is a great country, and my business is she's a fine. I'm a making her money hand over a foot. I'm so rich that, that I have to get a general manager. So I hired me a little 12-year-old bambino, Jimmy O'Connor, who said to me this morning, Boss, one more week like this and we start. What's the matter, Jimmy? Business is no good? Mr. Luigi, here the book's in front of you. Let's face it. Well, that's uh, fine. Then why are you upset, Jimmy? Well, we're in the hole. What's fine about it? In America, when things is good, then you're in a groove, huh? Yeah. Hole is a bigger than a groove, so everything is a fine. <laughs> Boss, business is terrible. Take a look at the books. That tells the story. Okay. Here is one page of money going out. Yep. Here is another page of money coming in. But there's nothing on that page. That's uh, the trouble, Jimmy. Money coming in and money going out. If only she could have stand still so we could grab her. <laughs> How much we got in a cash box? $2.87. How much I owe Pasquale for the rent? $40. It's uh, no come on even. <laughs> it's uh, too bad for Pasquale. <laughs> it's too bad for you Because if you don't pay him the rent He's got a right to kick you out Not in America This is a free country It's a free speech It's a free press But not free rent 
<laughs> you gotta pay him. Ah, Jimmy, I work so hard for this place. I have all of my beautiful statues. What I do, what I do? I've got a suggestion, but I don't think you'll like it. Anything, Jimmy. You a smart American boy. Anything. I'm a drowning. I'm a clutching at straws. I'm a drowning. Okay, Mary Rosa. Okay, I drown. <laughs> but Mr. Luigi, after all, this man the man. A fella's got to get married sometime. If Rosie is the last woman on the face of the earth, then I'd rather marry the face of the earth. <laughs> okay, Mr. Luigi. I've got another suggestion. Anything, Jimmy. I'm a drowning. I'm a clutching at straws. I'm a drowning. Okay, so what are your statues? I'm a going to down again, Jimmy. <laughs> you don't want to sell anything. As soon as somebody comes in to buy something, you discourage him. I don't discourage. I only say not to for sale. <laughs> Last week, we could have sold that one to General Grant. I never sell a president of the United States. <laughs> you won't even sell Robert E. Lee. He's a nice man, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Poor fella pick a wrong side, so why I sell him? <laughs> I excuse him. You got 18 Abraham Lincolns. 19? I buy another one yesterday. <laughs> Mr. Luigi, I know how we can clear up all our debts and pay the rent. How? Just sell one statue. George Washington. George Washington? Founder and a prop of our country, I never sell him. If you don't sell something, Mr. Luigi... Never sell a Washington. Then at least put him in the window. It'll attract customers. Okay, Jimmy. Make you feel better, I put Washington in a window. But I don't sell. Okay, George, up you go in a window. Don't worry, George. I put you way in the back. They never see you. Jimmy, you were just coming from school. You must be hungry. You go back in the kitchen, eat a little lunch, huh? Okay, boss. He's a good boy, Mr. Washington. Only he don't understand us. Don't worry, I don't sell you. When Jimmy go back to school, I take you out of window. I put in Coolidge. <laughs> Pardon me, is that for sale? I say, is that for sale? Which one of us do you want to buy? That's... <laughs> that statue, the one in the window. Suppose you want my window. You for sale? I'm interested in buying that statue of George Washington. George Washington across the Delaware. But the Luigi's a window? Never. Oh. That's too bad. You see, I'm looking for items that we can sell this afternoon. The Americana Society is having a charity auction. It's an no use, lady. I never sell a George Washington. Okay, Miss Luigi... Oh, so you got a customer. That's good. Lady don't want to buy anything. Goodbye, lady. But I did want to. I, uh... Never mind. Uh, goodbye, lady. Hey, what's going on here? Well, I'm just trying to buy that statue of George Washington. Great. Shut up, Jimmy. Go back and have dessert. I'll give you $100 for it. So You fired, Jimmy. I quit. Oh, no, you don't. I quit. You can't quit. I'm the boss. I do anything I like. I quit. <laughs> and you're fired. That's all. Goodbye, lady. But you promised me you'd sell the statue if you had a customer. That's right, Jimmy. I, I promised. Look, lady. I come to this country with only two things. This statue of Washington and a bandana. I sell you bandana. <laughs> I understand. But you see, the auction is only interested in historical items. Oh, I got a plenty. Here's Admiral Dewey fighting at the Manila. No, thanks. Then here's the Governor Dewey running at Oregon. <laughs> Hardly. How about the three nice round of vice presidents? Please, it's Washington I want. But I cannot sell the father of our country. Oh, I have a heart, Mr. Luigi. If we don't have a start, tomorrow all your statues will be out in the street. Well, all right. I'm a stuck, I'm a stuck. Either way, you'll break my heart. I take George Washington in the back. I wrap him up with my own hands. Lady, I got a suggestion. Yes? Maybe you take a two General MacArthur's. <laughs> Free. Please. Well, George, I got to sell you. What I do? If I don't sell, I don't pay the rent, I get it pushed out. 
Well, that's all right, maybe. But then I got to marry Rosa. If you ever see her, George, you don't blame me. Please, George, don't look at me like that. This auction lady, nice. She find a better place for you. Always. Since I'm a little boy, I know about you. You fine man, you rich man. You have a bigger farm, but when a poor people say, hello, George, we need a general. You say, okay. You give a plantation, June 1775. Now I give you up. Can't be helped, lots of things we do in wartime. Right now is a Luigi Bosco's war. Come on, George, say goodbye. Like you say goodbye in farewell address to September 1796. It's very sad for me too, George. Shake your hands, Mr. President of Washington. I wrap you up warm so you don't freeze like in a valley forge. Winter, 1777. Arrivederci, Giuseppe Washington. Here, Jimmy, put the statue in the lady's cart. Here's your hundred dollars. Thank you. And don't feel too badly, because all the proceeds from this auction go to charity. If you'd like to come, here's the address. The auction will be held in my home. Thank you, lady. Goodbye. Good day. Okay, Mr. Luigi, I put the statue in the car. Gee, she must be loaded. She drove off in a beautiful Lincoln. It's a funny country when Washington drives away in a Lincoln. <laughs> Put him under the mattress. Someday someone will come in here and steal you and the mattress. Not in a Chicago. <laughs> take my word for it. In America, everybody puts their money in the bank. I don't take your word in, Jimmy. I, anytime I got a problem, I go to see my teacher, Mrs. Spaulding. Take care of the story, Jimmy. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From motion. Hello, my teacher, Mrs. Spaulding. I brought to you apple. Oh, thank you, Luigi. I'll be with you in a minute. I wait. As soon as I finish with Mary here. Now, Mary, I was very surprised this morning when you didn't know who invented the electric light. Well, I'm surprised too with the little bambino. Everybody she ought to know who invent electric light. There you see, Mary. Here's a man who's only been in this country for six months, and he knows. Go on, Luigi. Tell her who invented the electric light. Marconi. Marconi, he invented everything. <laughs> no, Luigi. Edison invented the electric light. Then a Marconi invent Edison. <laughs> <laughs> no. I see you need some more private lessons, Luigi. All right, Mary, you can run along now. Be sure you have better answers tomorrow. All right, Miss Balding. Goodbye, Mr. Luigi. Goodbye, little Mary. Well, tell me, Luigi, how are you and Jimmy O'Connor getting along? He's a finer boy. Every day we have a fight. He's very pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad he found a home and a job with you. He's a good businessman, but he make me do wrong thing today. He make me sell a statue of George Washington. Is not the patriotic, huh? Uh, Luigi, patriotism isn't measured by statues. It's something you feel. Good. I feel much better. But, but what I do with the $100? Jimmy said put him in a bank. Well, he's right. I suggest you put your money in the Chase National Bank. Why? Why a bank? Because in America, you don't carry on business with cash. You need checks. Marshall Fields, they put the money in the bank? Oh, yes. Is good enough for me. <laughs> I go tell Pasquale and I give him a check for the rent. Well, you can see Pasquale later. Go straight to the bank. Don't walk around with so much cash. After all, there are some dishonest people in the world. Don't worry about me. I'm a smart man. Yes, but you look out for strangers. <laughs> They'll try to sell you the Union Station for $100. Not to me, Mrs. Spaulding. Second day I'm in Chicago, I buy it for $5. <laughs> Sunday, 
So, Mamma Mia, six months in this country and I'm a partner with the Marshall Field. <laughs> Who can it tell? Maybe in a six more months, the Marshall have a fight with the Fields, he throw them out, and then it's going to be Marshall Basco. <laughs> in a six months more, I have a fight with the Marshall and I throw him out. <laughs> in a one year, a Mamma Mia is a no more Marshall Field. Is a Basco Basco. <laughs> but now, like my teacher, Miss Spalding, say, I go to bank. But as Uncle Pietro always say, every cloud, she has a silver lining. But for me, there's no silver lining. Because I'm looking into gold teeth of our country, Mano Pasquale, who's smiling at me like a cat. Luigi! Luigi, my friend! <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. What's the matter for you? I'm your countryman. Why are you passing my place without coming in? Have a glass of wine. I'm in a hurry now. Wait a minute, Luigi, please, my friend. Please, please, you, you're breaking my arm. <laughs> Somebody's been asking for you. If it's who I think it is, goodbye. <laughs> Come in, Luigi, just for what I'm going I'm going to the bank, get a check, pay your rent. Forget the business. I'm going to worry about the rent. You're like a son to me. I'm bringing you from the old country. Why? You don't know either? <laughs> Listen to me, Luigi. I'm bringing you here to marry a Rosa. Now, come inside, stupid. You call me Papa? Ah, Rosa, my little bambino. <laughs> Look, Luigi's here. <laughs> hello. That's no way to say hello to a bachelor man. Say hello nicer. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. That's a nice conversation. <laughs> nice conversation you two just to have. You made it for each other. It's a perfect combination. Okay, Rosa, go back to the kitchen and help your mama. Pop is going to take care of your future. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a little angel. When I go to heaven, I look her up. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi... I'm a got a surprise for you. Next Sunday, how you like to go with me to a wedding? Who is it getting married? You are. <laughs> then you will be my son. What do you say? Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> oh, Luigi, Rose is a big, but she's a wonderful girl. She's got a, such a comfortable lap. You sit there, read the paper, smoke a pipe, drink a wine. What do you say? I want a wife. Not the upholstered chair. <laughs> Is this your last word, my son? Yes. Your very last word? Yes. You positive, absolutely sure? Yes. Where's my rent money? I throw you out in the street. <laughs> Pasquale, I got the rent money. I go to bank now. I give you a check. Luigi, you're making me nervous. Are you here? I here? Money here? Transaction. Pasquale, you don't understand. You like the greenhorn. That's the matter. You crazy. I'm here 26 years. Don't get excited. I explain you. See? Here is a $40 rent. I take. You and Pesh. <laughs> take them slow. First, I take the money to bank. You're going to pay my rent to the bank? No, no. Mrs. Spaulding. <laughs> Mrs. Spaulding, she explained it to me. I explain it to you. All right. I take this money to bank. You take this money to the bank. They take the money from me. They take the money from you. They deposit. They deposit. They give me a check. Give you a checkbook. I take one check. You take one check. I write. You write. Pay to order Pasquale Spaghetti Palace of forty dollars and no cents. Pay to order Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace of forty dollars and no cents. I bring you a check. You bring me a check. You make a cross on the back. I make a cross on the back. Then you go to bank. I go to bank. You stand on the line. Stand on the line. You Tell the fella you want the money. I tell the fella I want the money. <laughs> he gave you $40. He giving me $40. It's a very simple. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Everybody's happy, see? See, it's very simple. I'm not happy. Money's right here on the table. Give me. No. I tell you this once more. <laughs> I take money to bank. 
You take the money to bank. They take the money from me. They take the money from you. They deposit. They deposit. They give me a checkbook. Give you a checkbook. I take a one check. You take a one check. I write. You write. Pay to order Pasquale Spaghetti Palace of forty dollars and no cents. Pay to order Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace of forty dollars and no cents. I bring you a check. You bring me a check. You make cross on the back. Make cross on the back. Then you go to bank. I go to bank. You stand alive. Stand in alive. You tell a fella you want the money. I tell a fella I want the money. He give you forty dollars. He give me forty dollars. <laughs> What's the simple? Pay me my money! That's a what's the simple? Wait. I explain to you once more. <laughs> I take the money to bank. Please, Luigi. I've been to the bank twice. <laughs> I'm tired. Please, give me my money. Wait. Once more, I explain. <laughs> I go to the bank. You go to the bank. <laughs> they take the money from me. They take the money from me. Excuse me, is this uh, Chase National Bank? Yes. I like it to talk to Mr. Chase. <laughs> Mr. Chase is dead. I wait. <laughs> is a Mr. Chase's a son here? He has no son. Oh, that's uh, too bad. He's got a finer building here. If he's got a daughter, I'm a single. <laughs> Look, sir, this is a bank. Do you wish to open an account here? See? Si. Fine. Uh, is this your first bank account? See. Si. All right. Now we have the necessary papers right here. It'll just take a few minutes. Now then, uh, what did you say your name was? I don't say. <laughs> well, what is it? What for you need my name? Uh, for our records. Now, what is your surname? First the time anybody calling me sir, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, your second name. You want my second name first? Please. And my, my first name second. <laughs> Precisely. That's upside down. That's our system. Now, if you don't mind, sir, how much would you like to start with? I like it to start with a thousand dollars. That's a good round sum. But I only got a hundred. <laughs> well, just give me the money and I'll open up an account for you. You want a checking account? Yes, I, I want to write a check. I, I, I have to pay Pasquale the rent. Uh, or I have to marry Rose, and that's then I got... That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> here's your deposit slip, and here's your checkbook. Now, if you'll give me the money. Is that uh, necessary? <laughs> yes. All right. First, what do you do with this money? Why, we... We invest it. Yes, yes, that's what we do with it. <laughs> Where you invest? Where? Why we... What did you say? <laughs> Where you invest? Yes. Where do we invest all this money? I ask you first. <laughs> Perhaps you'd better talk to our vice president. <coughs> Mr. Thurston, would you help me here with a problem? Certainly, Parker. There's a person here who wants to open an account. Parker, I must leave in a few minutes. Can't you take care of it? Sir, he wants to know what we do with our money. What? That's a ridiculous question. I agree with you, sir. But what do we do with our money? <laughs> we invest it. But where? Where? Yes. Where? Well, uh, get back to your cage, Parker. I'll handle this myself. <laughs> How do you do, sir? My name is Thurston. I'm vice president of this bank. Ordinarily, I don't handle matters such as this, but uh, I have always had a slogan. The small depositor of today is the big depositor of tomorrow. Then I come back tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no, no I, I didn't mean it that way. Now, sir, you want to know what we do with our money. See, it's important. Is the first hundred dollars I ever have. Yes, I understand your feelings. Well, this is what we do with your hundred dollars. 
We buy railroads, telephone companies, light and power, public utilities, street cars, real estate, and government bonds. You satisfied? Seems like a lot for a hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, no. No, you don't understand. You see, we pool all of our deposits. We take your money and pay you an interest, and then it works for us. We reinvest it. That's how we make our money, by using your money. You understand? I'm, uh, I'm a very nervous. <laughs> uh, let me, uh, now try another approach. Uh, what business are you in? Antique business. All right. Now, you make your money by buying and selling antiques, right? See. Si. Now, a lot of times, you can sell an antique for a high price and buy back the same antique at an auction at a cheaper price. That means that your money is working for you. Now, if you give your money to That's us... That's a good for you, but it's a bad for me. I'm not putting the money in it's a bank. I got the other ideas of what to do. No, just a minute, sir. How dare you question my business sense? For your information, Mr. Vasco, I've been with the Chase National Bank for ten years. Before that, I was with the Third National Bank for five years. Before that, I was with the Second National Bank for three years. Before that, I was with the First National Bank for two years. That's my professional record. What do you say to that? It's a too bad you couldn't hold a job. <laughs> to Mrs. Moore, the original needle used by Betsy Ross. She was born in 1752, died 1836, who was a wonderful woman. Oh, Mr. Bosco, I didn't see you. I just come. Is it all right? You're perfectly welcome. In fact, we're just about to auction off your statue of George Washington. Good is the main reason I come. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this statue of George Washington has an unusual history. The last owner gave it up at a great personal sacrifice. If I don't give it up, I have to take a rose. Please. Please. <laughs> now, this statue, as you all know, came... From Luigi Basco's window, 21 and North the Holy State Street, open a night and a day, a new and all and a thing. All right. Who'll start with 500? Holy smokes, this lady only pay me 100. Please. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, remember, this is George Washington. He's been elected. He's not campaigning. <laughs> uh, come now, who'll say 300? Who'll say two? Come, ladies and gentlemen, who'll start the ball rolling? Ten dollars. Ten dollars is innocent. Oh, I think Mr. Bosco is right. Can't I hear twenty-five dollars for the father of our country? You bet you, you hear more than a twenty-five dollars for the father of our country. You hear a hundred dollars and two dollars and eighty-seven cents. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bosco. You're a real American. Well, not yet. You see, I only come here September 1947, so I don't get a first the papers. Yes, yes, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard this man's bid. Is there another bid? No other? Oh, Mr. Bosco, thank you, but you don't have to bid that high. There's only a $10 bid ahead of you. You can buy the statue for anything over $10. No, my bid stands. Even that's not enough for George Washington. If I have more, I bid more. But it's a great personal sacrifice. So what? So Pasquale throw me out in the street. He's all right with me. So I stay out in the street with a George Washington. He's worth it. He's a great man, a brave man. Brave like a Garibaldi. He's a brave maybe. He crossed the Delaware in a small boat December 25th, 1776. He defeated the British at the Trenton next day in the morning. He beat the whole of British Army October 19th, 1781. So people are making him a first the president. Twice. 1789 and 1796. Maybe you don't know how great a man he is because you're born here and you're used to him like children to father. Maybe is why you don't know how much he's worth to have a George Washington in your house. But to me, I know. I have him in my store and every morning I say, good morning, Mr. President. And every night I say, sleep good, Mr. President. Is a fine country, America. That's the way I, Luigi Basco... Bid the one hundred the two dollars and eighty cent eight the cents. I found another penny. Thank you, Mr. Basco. Going once, going twice. One thousand dollars. One thousand dollars bid by Mr. Thurston of the Chase National Bank. Money. Are there any other bids? Mrs. Wells, I I I know got the money now, but I work hard the next year. Maybe you take my money now and I give you a rest on an installment plan. Oh, I'm sorry. We must have cash. A thousand once. Twice. 
three times. Sold to Mr. Thurston. Mamma mia. My uh, Mr. Statue. Thurston, where do you want the statue delivered? 21 North Halsted Street. Uh, Mr. Thurston, that's my address. Exactly. That's where George Washington belongs. Thank With you. you. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. I, I pay you back. Here, here's a down payment of my hundred dollars. Well, I'll take this money and open an account for you at the bank. But the statue is yours. It's a gift. It's impossible. In America, Mr. Basco, everything is possible. So, Mamma Mia, I got a George Washington bank. I got a $100 in a bank, so I pay rent to Pasquale with a check, so I'm a saved from a Rosa. P.S. P.S., here's a check for you for $5. It's a good check on a Chase National Bank. <laughs> Assets, $16 million yesterday. Today, $16 million, $102.88. <laughs> One more P.S. Today, I see in a movie magazine pictures of Betty Grable, Lana Turner, and Rita Hayward. Pick out which one you like for daughter-in-law and let me know. <laughs> Don't laugh, for Mama Mia, because in America, everything is possible. <laughs> Your son, Luigi, the little immigrant. Be sure to listen in again next week at this same time when the Columbia Broadcasting System will deliver another letter describing the adventures of Luigi Bosco, the little immigrant. Tonight's script was directed by Cy Howard and written by Cy Howard and High Craft. It starred J. Carol Nash as the little immigrant with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Bobby Ellis as Jimmy, and Mary Jane Croft as Nan Spaulding. Music was under the direction of Wilbur Hatch. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Oh, my.